Hello friends, welcome. Friend, yesterday Vodafone Idea came out with their quarterly results. Now these results are very, very important given the fact that Vodafone Idea is struggling with DOT debt and DOT has not come out with a restructuring plan. So in this video, friends, I am going to take you through line by line, row by row, each and every KPI Vodafone Idea has been announcing quarter by quarter. So you will see the time series data right in front of your screen and you will be able to judge by yourself whether Vodafone Idea is making progress, what are the progress align items and where they are struggling. So this is the whole idea about this video and this will be a very interesting video because it will be laced with a lot of data. But don't worry, I'm going to take you through each and every line item one by one to give you a flavor as to what is going on. First is the total subscriber base which Vodafone Idea reports. So I have in front of you from December 21 quarter till June 2024 quarter, 25 quarter, which is the latest quarter. So if you see here, the absolute numbers are here and the incremental numbers are here in this row. Now, if you look at the incremental numbers, you'll see that they have been losing subscriber quarter by quarter significantly till the last quarter. They have lost only 0.5 million customers, which is a very good as regards sign for Vodafone idea. So this is a positive sign, 0.5 million, because if you look at, just look at this, every quarter they have been losing subscribers like hell, right? So 0.5, this is positive. The second thing is that we have to compare their reported subscriber with the TRA reported subscriber, because there are two definitions, subscriber definition one, subscriber definition number two. Now I assume that, I, we can presume that the TRA definition, which Vodafone Idea reports to TRAI, includes dummy subscriber. Now if you look at, the dummy subscribers have been going down, 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 till June 2023, uh, sorry, June 2023, it went to 8.9, and then it kind of reduced, 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 and then became almost became static. Now this quarter, the dummy subscriber has gone down to 7.28, and I think that this is, a very good sign because look at this, this has remained stable. So these dummy subscribers have gone, means Vodafone Idea either has taken those dummy subscribers out of their network or they have been to convert them into useful subscribers, right? Now, look at their postpaid number. Now the postpaid numbers actually includes M2M, right? So M2M is a very low paying subscriber, therefore we are not interested in M2M much. But what we are interested in is their post-paid subscriber excluding M2M. This is important. Now look at this row because I don't have these numbers for these quarters because Vodafone Idea does not give a breakup of their post-paid subscribers and their, uh, from there, in there, if you look at this, uh, this line item, this line item doesn't have a breakup between post-paid and M2M because M there are two types of post-paid, M2M and mobile post-paid. Now, how did I get this breakup? Because TRAI has started publishing total, uh, you know, M2M subscribers. So if you put the TRAI numbers here, you will be able to calculate. So this is the M2M subscriber as per TRAI. Now, if you subtract this M2M from this row, you are going to get this row. So you will see that the postpaid subscribers have been increasing, which were, it went, went low. Uh, in December 2024 quarter, then there was a negative of 0.35 million in December, March 2025 quarter. And now suddenly it has gone again back to 0.17. So their postpaid subscriber numbers have increased by 0.5 million. Now this line item is also pretty important, which is prepaid subscriber as the percentage of total subscriber base. Now if you see here, when the postpaid number was 5.5, with a 9.52 million, at that time, the percentage of prepaid subscriber was 88.5%. Now, this number is almost at par with this number of June quarter. The percentage of prepaid subscriber of the total base subscriber is 86.5. So there has been a, how much? 200 basis point reduction as far as the prepaid subscriber on the total subscriber, which means that the overall subscribers, which Vodafone Idea has, the quality has increased by 200 basis points. We can conclude like that. And that is what is a good sign, I would say, right? So uh, then we have got the average revenue user blended, which includes M2M. So you'll see that the average revenue ARPU, 
uh, has uh, increased after the tariff hike and then now it is at 165 so there hasn't been a significant increase from 164 to 165 so there have been just one rupees increased for the last three quarter now if you exclude m to m uh, there has been a two rupees increase right uh, quarter by quarter you see from 166 there has been a substantial increase here right and then we have two rupees increase each and every quarter right so this is now at 177 now if we assume that the post paid subscriber is paying an arpu of rupees 400 their prepaid subscriber arpu is a very low 156 which means that their prepaid subscribers are not recharging for the full month so this is a matter of concern though there has been an increase of rupees 2 for uh, for the last three quarters you know if you see here from 150 to 154 154 to 156 then comes the total unique tower count now here this is becoming interesting because this clearly shows that vodafone idea is making a lot of investment now this total unique tower towers uh, these are the absolute numbers here now the total unique tower incremental numbers will tell that story because if you see here that from in the March 2022 quarter, it was 215 increase incremental. And then you can just look at these numbers right in front of your screen. The numbers actually had been a lot of negative numbers in many various quarters. But from September 2024, there has been a substantial increase in the total uh, unique tower count. Now, if you, what you can do is you can actually you can take this as a reference, which was the number in June 2025, and you can add the total tower count of last four quarters, September, December, March, June, you get a percentage of 7.54. Means you can see that what I basically mean. So this number, this, this addition divided by this number, which was in June. So this number gives you a 7.54 percent, which means that if you consider this as a base, there have been a 7.54 percent increase in the total unique cover tower count in the last four quarters. Total unique broadband tower, same situation if you see here, you see there has been a substantial increase. Now, if you follow the same definition which I did earlier for this, you can see that if you take this as a reference, then this is 10.78% increase of the total broadband tower count, right? Total broadband site, you can see that there has been a significant increase. Now, if you add all these, all these numbers, you can see that, and if you take this as a reference, similar definition, it is a 23.71% increase. You see that 23.71% increase here from this reference. So there has been a substantial increase of total broadband site. Now, if you see here, there have been a lot of negative sites here, right? Till June 2000, a negative increment of broadband site. Why is like this? From till from this March 2022 till June 2024. Look at these negative sites. Why? Because I, I presume here that these, num these negative numbers is because of dismantling of 3G sites. So, so what Vodafone idea was probably doing here was that they have been dismantling all their 3G sites till March 2024. You see this? These numbers. So if you add all these numbers, you will come out with a number of minus 33K. And thereafter, when the 3G numbers, 3G sites have all been dismantled, they have ramped up their, their uh, broadband subscriber, which is 4G. And now they are doing 5G. Now, data volume, if you look at data volume, then you will see that the data volume also has increased and uh, average data usage for 4G and 5G subscribers have in earlier it was, you know, if you see the number, it was actually at 5196 in the June quarter. And I follow the same definition, which I did for the others. So if you add all these things together, it comes out to be 17.17%. So the increase of the total consumption per user of 4G and 5G customer has been 11, sorry, 11.17% 11 compared to this reference of June quarter 2024. So why there was negative here? Because I believe that after tariff hike, there must have been a you know shrinkage of consumption and now the consumption has picked up with 5G. Now gross revenue, 
numbers actually had dropped in the quarter of March 2025. It had increased significantly in the month of September 2024 because of tariff increase. And then December it dropped and then March it actually became negative. Now they have been able to arrest this number. Now it is positive 90, which is a good sign. So again, the same definition if I follow, you'll see that with the reference to this, num this number, which is June 2024, there has been an increase of 4.89%. Now OPEX, similarly, if you see here, I follow the same definition of OPEX with reference to June number, all this addition, if I do, there has been an increase of OPEX by 1.69%. So the OPEX uh, is not a very good sign, but they have to increase OPEX because their number of towers have increased significantly. EBITDA margin following the same definition, uh, take this as a reference 420047, uh, 0, it has increased by, if you add all the EBITDA margin, it has increased by 9.69%. Now friends, this is the overall situation as far as their KPI numbers are concerned. But I would like to point out one important thing. Now look at this row 45, interest finance cost net. Now these numbers have, these are all millions. So you actually divide by 10, then you'll get rupees crores. So you see that this is a substantial number, interest cost. Now these are interest costs for the government debt. Now people may say that this is already in moratorium. Why they're adding interest cost? Because this is how the accounting practice is. Accounting practice is that if you have to legally pay interest, even though there is a moratorium, you have to take that in books in order to create uh, uh, you know, a integrated view as to what is the valuation of this. Actually, the accounting uh, of books is nothing but to value the company. There is a method to value the company using an accounting method. Otherwise, the market will value the company based on cash flow. But you have to take this into account to subtract the total, uh, you know, this number, the, uh, the, uh, the, the obligation to, to pay uh, interest, you have to take this in account in your financial, in your accounting statement. Now, interestingly, the amount of money that they have taken into consideration for their finance cost, their profit and their losses is almost at par. Now, what I've done is I have divided this number and I have multiplied this by, by num minus one, which is the total comprehensive income, which is profit and loss and divided this by this. So this ratio comes out to be 1.22 for June quarter uh, 2024, then 1.14 for September 2024, then December is 1.16 and then March is 1.15 and June is 1.15, which means that this finance cost that Vodafone idea is to meet, to pay to DOT, this obligation is having a detrimental impact on their profitability. Not only it is not allowing them to carry more bank debt, these are all DOT debt, deferred payment, which you see that they have listed down in their annual statements. If you go to the annual statement, repayment of deferred payment as of March 2025. So you can have a look at it. Just pause the video. You can see all the auctions here have been listed out and the payment details and the AGR also will uh, listed out. And this is the total number and the total number comes out to be around 1.9 lakh crores. So that's the, this is what the interest payment is all about. And their losses are actually at par with their interest payment. That is important to understand. So if you get rid of this, then their losses will go down substantially, which is important. Uh, that is why the debt restructuring is so important for Vodafone Idea Survival. Now, friends, what I'm going to do, I will do one more thing here. So there is a sheet which I had. Yeah, this is the sheet which I wanted to talk about. This will give us a view as to what is Vodafone Idea's tower investment compared to that of Bharti. It will give a kind of an idea of what they are doing. Now, if you see that I have from March, June, September, December, then we have March 2025 and the June 2025 numbers. So if you add all these numbers here, what of an idea, unique tower, it has increased by 13.7K, right? These are the numbers, 13 point, uh, this, this total number, uh, sorry, these are unique tower counts, incremental unique tower count, and this is 4G tower count. So 4G has increased by 18.9K. Incremental unique tower count has increased by 13.7K, and the 4G numbers have increased from June till June 2025 by 
18.91k. Now, compare that with Bharti. Bharti's incremental unique tower, if I, if I add from here till here, this has increased to 32k versus Vodafone Ideas increase of 13k. So, Bharti has done significant incremental tower capex compared to Vodafone idea. That is a symptom number one. Now, as regards incremental broadband sites, if I if you do this last four quarter or let's do last four quarter, and if we add this, it comes out to be 98.9k, means 99k, and Bharti is 52.5k. So it clearly demonstrates the fact that Vodafone idea has is putting more sites. The tower may not have increased significantly because Bharti has got more tower, unique tower sites, but Vodafone Idea has been adding a lot of sites, right? So they have dismantled their 3G and they are now changing their, their network from 3G, uh, from 3G to 4G and 5G. So this, you pause the video and you can actually have a look and compare that with Bharti, Vodafone Ideas, tower investment and site investment. So friend, that's all in this video. There is nothing much to talk about. So I... Vodafone Idea needs debt restructuring in order to arrest their subscriber uh, loss and to ramp up their revenue and they need a tariff hike. So that's all friends in this video. I hope that you like this video and let me know if you have any questions or comments in the comment section and I'll come back with a new video next time with a new topic. Thanks for listening to the end.